Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here. Today I'm going to be talking about Jose Mourinho and his imminent appointment at Manchester United. I am over the moon. Jojo Mendes leaked this to uh, outlets like Sky Sports, BBC. But before this, there were two people in particular, or one's a station, one's a person, that are highly reliable within the world of football. And they've maintained that this would be happening. One of them said it months ago, and that was Damasio. He's a journalist, uh, primarily in Italy, but he has contacts all over the world, and he is highly, highly reliable. So as soon as he said it, I started to believe it. But then, uh, I think the day before the FA Cup final, B in Sports, the Arabic B in Sports, who are extremely reliable as well, they've got ties with PSG. They said it on their news channel that Jose Mourinho... Uh, will be joining Manchester United, it's a matter of days, uh, and they were briefed by Jojo Mendes. Now, obviously, with their ties to PSG as well, Mourinho was linked to PSG, so they'd have known a bit of that. They they also were the first to get Di Maria to PSG. Uh, I think they got Di Maria to Man United as well, because PSG backed out of that. They thought it was too expensive back in the day. Or, no, they, they went after someone else, didn't they? But anyway, uh, they got Martial because they've got ties to France. Obviously, he was Monaco. And uh, they also got Falcao when he came to Man United. So they, they are the two highly reliable sources. And then, of course, after the FA Cup, Jojo Mendes briefed uh, BBC Sport and Sky Sport saying that Jose Mourinho will be joining Manchester United and what will be happening is uh, Ed Woodward and the Glazers and someone else will be having a meeting to tell Louis van Gaal he is uh, no longer going to be the manager next season. That will happen tomorrow and then on Tuesday Jojo Mendes will fly in from China, sort out the documents, get it all signed and it will hopefully be announced on Tuesday. Now I want to eradicate some people's um, False opinions of Mourinho, really. There's two huge arguments for why we shouldn't sign him. And they're both pathetic, to be perfectly honest. First one, he's a short-term manager. Right, look at his career. Uh, obviously, I think he managed two Portuguese teams before Porto. I can't remember one of them, but one of them was Benfica. Obviously, he didn't really win anything with them. They were stepping stones to get to Porto, where he won the Champions League. Uh, I'm sure he won the league as well. Uh, I'm not entirely sure there, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm sure he did. Uh, but anyway, he wanted a new challenge, which is fair enough. So he came to Chelsea. Now, uh, back in the day, I think, was this Abramovich's first season? I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, Mourinho went to Chelsea. He won the league twice, and then he had a disagreement with Abramovich, so he was sacked. Couldn't really do anything because of that. He was sacked. So he went into Milan. He won the Champions League again. Uh, he won the league with Inter. And then again, he wanted, you know, a, no disrespect to Inter, but a bigger club, a different challenge. Fair enough. So he moved to Real Madrid, where he had three years there. Now, that is unbelievable to have three years at Real Madrid. And I'm pretty sure he's the only manager in the last eight years to win the league for Real Madrid. Uh, and he also beat to the league. Pep's Barcelona, who many believed was the best team ever, the greatest team ever. Obviously, there's Messi, Neymar, Suarez, and that team now. But back in the day, they were regarded as the best team ever. Um, and he beat them to the title. And then, because of disagreements again in the third year, he decided to come back to Chelsea and uh, <laughs> again won them the league. And uh, in the third season, obviously, the players didn't really perform and he got sacked again. Now... What, my defence for Mourinho, Inter and Porto, he wanted different challenges. Real Madrid, you look at their team, they have a manager every year or two. So the fact that he managed to stay there for three years is quite an achievement. They're a short-term club. They turn over managers all the time. Look, uh, uh, they've surely had about 10 managers in the last 15 years. Maybe even less than that. Same as Chelsea. They're, they, they're the exact same. They turn over managers very, very quickly, as soon as they do not win something, even if they do, look at, was it Di Matteo who won the, uh, was it the Champions League Di Matteo won, then was sacked because he didn't win the league, uh, Rafa Benitez won Europa, which was the best he could do, and then he was sacked as well, I might have got that mixed up, but I know that happened to two Chelsea managers, so Jose Mourinho, for him to have won three of Chelsea's four Premier Leagues, and then he's been sacked twice because of disagreements or the players falling out with him. It's ridiculous, but the fact he was able to stay there that long is testament to Jose Mourinho. Now, my argument for Man United, 
We are a long-term club. I mean, I know we've got rid of Moyes. We've got rid of Louis van Gaal in the last three years, but they have underperformed. Now, I'm sure Jose Mourinho will be able to get us our minimum target of Champions League, which is a fourth-place finish. I'm pretty sure he'll be able to do that. So, as long as he can, there's no reason why he cannot be a long-term manager. We are a long-term club. Of course, we want managers to stay. And I think Mourinho actually wants... A long stay for once. He wants to prove that he can do it. He's been in four different countries. He's been there. He's done it. So if he can get lasting success at a club, I think this one's perfect for him. I'm getting Skyped, all right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. But anyway, I, I think that's what he would want. And Manchester United is the perfect ground to do that. As long as he gets the minimum requirements, we'll keep him on, we'll back him, we'll give him the funding. And, you know, I think it'll work out. Now, the other argument, he doesn't play youth. I can't really comment about Porto. I'm pretty sure he would have done because uh, Porto have a lot of youngsters, but I'm not sure. All right, so I'm not going to say he played youth for Porto. Inter Milan, again, I'm not really sure if he did then. Um, but Real Madrid, I'll, I'll talk about Real Madrid and Chelsea in particular. Real Madrid, they don't care about playing youth. What benefit would Jose Mourinho have had by playing youth? They only want success. They buy Galacticos every single year. They don't have to play youth so if Mourinho did play youth what benefit would it have been to him or the club he knows that they're short term anyway so he played the Galacticos which is exactly what Florentino Perez would have wanted Chelsea are similar they've got a lot of brilliant youngsters but you look at Goose Hiddink when he uh, took over from Mourinho he said he would play youth they, they barely have, even when they had nothing to fight for, when everything was gone, Europa League was out of the question, they couldn't do anything. He still didn't really play youth until the very last game. So Chelsea are a club that don't really promote youth either. They, they obviously want success as well. So again, where was the benefit of Mourinho using these youngsters that they've got if it's not going to help him or it's not one of the club's philosophies? Manchester United, on the other hand, that is a very integral part of Manchester United, playing youth. So he's not going to disregard it. Obviously, when we're hiring him, I know Louis van Gaal uses the word philosophy a lot, but it's a philosophy of the club. So we're not going to hire Mourinho if he's not going to agree to use the youth. And why wouldn't he? Has he ever had this level of youth where they've played so many times they know how to play first team football we've got players like Rashford like Fosu Mensa like Bothwick Jackson they might not be the absolute greatest Rashford might be but um they they're still there and they they know how to play we've got others that we've bought in Martial in Luke Shaw of course he's going to play them. Why do people think he's going to play experienced stars? Yes, he'll make some signings. Ed Woodward will help him with that. And maybe gameplay might be slightly shortened. But to be honest, look at Van Hal. He dropped Bothwick Jackson for the FA Cup final for Rohu. He dropped Fosu Mensa as soon as he made a mistake for Everton. The only reason he didn't drop Rashford is because when Wayne Rooney came back, he wanted to play in midfield. If he wanted to play up front, Rashford wouldn't have played every single game and it also would have looked retarded if he dropped Rashford because of how good he did when he'd started so although Louis van Gaal gave a lot of chances look at some players like McNair Where, where's McNair why didn't he give a chance to Andros Pereira he he denied him alone in January saying you're going to be playing first team football Where, where's the first team football it's because we didn't get injuries if we hadn't have got injuries to our strikers would we have seen Marcus Rashford no. Would we have seen Bothwick Jackson if our left-backs hadn't been injured? Of course not. For Sumensa, the same. It's because of injuries. And then he goes on, oh, that's why I've got a, short, um, a small selection of players so I can give youth a chance. Maybe so. But Rude Hullet made an interesting point on BBC. And he went, the reason that Van Hal uses youth is because he disagrees with a lot of the older players. Because he believes in his own philosophies. He doesn't care what they think and what they know because they've played for years. He disregards them, disrespects them, kind of. He didn't say that, but he, he kind of led us to believe that. So he prefers younger players because he can mould his philosophies, his tactics into them. Which is why... He plays them, but aside from Van Hal, right, his reign's going to come to an end tomorrow, which is fantastic. He won the FA Cup, I'm delighted, all right? I'm glad he did what he set out to do, and that's win a trophy in England. He's won it in four countries now. Funnily enough, <laughs> the only man to do that is Jose Mourinho, uh, the only other man, sorry, and he's going to be our new manager. So, yeah, congrats to Lou Van Hal. He might be offered an ambassador role in the club, 
Fair enough. Uh, as long as he has no says on uh, transfers, things like that, then you know what? Give him it. But he'll retire from management as a as a sort of success. So I'm happy with that. But back with Jose Mourinho, I, I've made my opinions clear. I genuinely believe this is the best possible appointment. I said this when Pep Guardiola was available, when Carlo Angelotti was, well, I say available, but they weren't announced that they were going to Man City and Bayern Munich. I said Jose Mourinho is the one man we need, and he is. And I'm telling you something, all right? If you disagree with what I've said, fair enough. Come back in two years into Mourinho's reign, and you tell me I was wrong. If I was wrong, I'll admit it. I'm humble enough to do that. I was wrong about Martial, thankfully. I thought we'd overpaid, as a lot of people did. I thought like we could have got more experience players but I was wrong and I admitted it on Twitter and thankfully I am wrong I want us to do well and I firmly believe Jose Mourinho is the best man for the job so in two years come come and tell me if I was wrong if I was wrong but I'm pretty sure he'll be he'll have been a success by then and hopefully he'll have a lot more future success after that so yeah two years into his reign let's see what happens